What's right. happening? Is that the reality of what's happening over there? Where are you cropping? Can you crop above my head? <laughs> Mysterious. So, like, we've interviewed Stella from a yeah. great height. Top of my head. I'm Zing Sing, and today, broadly meet Stella McCartney. I've come to Harrods to meet with Stella as she's launching her new area in one of the world's most luxurious department stores. She's an outspoken fashion designer and daughter of a pretty famous rock star, interning with Christian Lacroix aged 15 and heading up French brand Chloe by the age of 25. It has been a pretty charmed rise through the fashion ranks and she now runs her own label. She's a child of two celebrity vegetarians. Her mother Linda was a staunch animal rights activist and creator of the world's most famous vegetarian sausage. This has had an impact on her entire career and she's not afraid to blast the fashion industry for their use of leather and fur and has even fronted videos for animal protection charity PETA. She's brought a fresh perspective to fashion and design and has blazed a trail in promoting ethical, sustainable fashion. I wanted to find out how she squares these principles with running a successful global business. Yesterday, you did see me in the Brits yesterday. <laughs> and that's why I've got a bit of a red eye thing happening today. I'm a huge fan of your bags because you look at them and you think yeah, that's leather. That but it right. feels so soft and it feels so real. Yeah. How much work goes into a bag like that? Oh my God. I think it's one of the most sort of intensive parts of the process for us. From day one, the manufacture of it, you have to just approach in a completely different way. So we make all of our accessories in Italy and the finest factories, but in the places that make leather. Do you meet a lot of resistance from people who are like, wouldn't it be a hundred times easier if you just went and used leather, you know? I think, you know, I was, to, I, it's funny, I had a CEO who said to me, well, you know, well, you'll never have an accessories business, right? And he's like, you know, and I was like, oh, really? It was kind of a drag. I didn't really think that was the case. But actually, if you look at the big fashion houses, they really only sell bags or shoes. You know, they're actually, there's very little ready to wear in their stores. Our accessories business has just been growing and growing, and we've got a hit bag, the Falabella. I know it seems sort of self evident to you now, but. Um, talk me through why you decided to take an anti leather, anti fur stance. From an early age, I was encouraged to be a little bit more sympathetic to our fellow creatures. I didn't even have to think about it. It was just like, if I go in whatever cure I go into, of course I'm not gonna kill animals in the process. It's actually our point of difference, weirdly enough. You know, I was ridiculed for many, many, many years. What do you mean by ridiculed? I find, you know, were people so kind of dismissive? I just think it's it, anything different in an industry, you're kind of normally made to feel a bit ridiculous. And also people, you know, they don't like, um, they don't always like people that are different, do they? Yeah, it's very you know. So I know you designed some faux fur, and I saw that in your autumn winter collection last year. Do you not think that designing stuff that looks like fur and behaves like fur, do you not think that encourages the use of, you know, actual fur? I thought about that a lot. You know, the pieces of fake fur I was seeing, they were so lifelike that I was like, I don't want to use this stuff because it looks like real fur and people are going to think real fur is acceptable. So I created a label called Fur Free Fur so that you could see it wasn't real fur. And actually, in my mind, if you see that in the street, you're going to go, that looks like fur, that'll keep me as warm as fur, and fur feels really wrong. So I'm going to get that instead. I think that the fashion industry can get away with a lot, and it is getting away with murder. Fur is the most unnecessary thing in the world. They're, those animals aren't eaten. If they try and pretend that the fashion industry animals are a byproduct, which, by the way, they are not, they are bred to be killed, to be made into bags. The fashion industry is supposed to be modern, mm -hmm. and I think that working with the same material for thousands and thousands of years when it's not environmentally friendly and it's not needed, I think it's really old fashioned. Quite like you lot. Oh, I've got a bloody song in my head. What is it? 
Where? Where? New where? Rihanna where? one. Where? Oh, right, yeah. I fell asleep with that in my head. Anyway, let's oh, Come on, let's yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah. We could all hang out. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to just kind of take it back and ask you, did your parents expect you to go into fashion at all? Well, I was pretty kind of adamant that I was going to do it quite early on. So by the time you got to St Martin's and you did a graduate show and you had Kate Moss and Naomi Campbell modelling for you, which is amazing, which is very unusual. It feels like so long leader. ago. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? I forgot about that. <laughs> they were my friends. We were hanging out in London with, they still are my friends. And I was kind of in this situation where I was like, I've got a graduate show and I've got to get models and you're all my mates. Like, I'm hanging out with you 24 seven. And is it weird that I don't ask you? Or I know I'm going to get killed if I ask you, but do I care if I get killed? And anyone else in my college, if they could get Kate Moss to model in it, they'd ask Kate, you know, damn, I think they'd jump at the chance. So I kind of mulled it over and then I just thought, yeah. I think it just happened that I had a very famous set of parents, which didn't particularly go down well. Has that been more of a hindrance? When you were starting out, for instance, was that more of an obstacle for you to overcome? No, you know, I think about that a lot. It's been with me my entire life. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't sit very well with me, growing, you know, when I was younger. I mean, it's one of the reasons I went into fashion, because I didn't want to be put into a box and kind of be judged. I think you can be the kid of a famous person or a very successful person or a wealthy person and you can work and that's great, you know, or you can not work. Right, yeah, you were never going to be the kind of person who sort of lives on a tropical island and that's it. No, but that sounds quite good. <laughs> no, Come no, to right, think of it. Right before Paris Fashion Week, Yeah, I might just go to a tropical island. So you were only 25 when you were appointed the head of Chloe and that must have been an enormous amount of pressure for a young woman. How did you deal with that? You know, I think I dealt with it in a way that I kind of had that wonderful naivety of being 25. Honestly, I was like, I'll just nip to Paris, work at this place for a little bit, and then I'll, you know, come back. Would you say that was the biggest risk you've taken as a designer, just like leaving the label that you started uh, and then going over to Chloe? No, I don't think. I think there's been many risks. I mean, I think I'm, yeah, I'm full of risks. I mean, leaving Chloe was more risky yeah. than leaving my brand. Mm -hmm because Chloe was doing great. You know, I was leaving a major hit. And then I was coming back and starting a brand that, you know, that maybe was not going to be a major hit. One of the big executives there, he said, well, you know, name me one brand that has a woman designing for it that has a global success. Like, name me one. You know, as if to kind of scare me out of my decision to leave them. As if to kind of just say, okay, well, good luck. You're going to fail because you're a woman, That's essentially. Terrible. And you're British. He was like, you know, name me a British brand. I think. Anna Winter actually said once that you were significant as a female fashion designer because there were so few female fashion designers working on a luxury level. Is it still the case there? You know, do you still feel like it's a man's world when it comes to luxury design? I mean, you know, I like to think it's, it's less the case. Um, I think that it's quite hot to be a woman designing now for women. I think people see that there's a connection there and it makes sense. Like, wow, that would took a long time to figure out. You know, I think at the end of the day, if you're good, you shouldn't be sort of judged on your sex. You should be judged on your work. And in terms of, you know, other stuff you've done outside of Stella McCartney, the house, you've done loads of things. You've done Adidas, you've designed the uh, uniforms for Team GB for the Olympics. Yeah. So how important is it to you that you have all these fingers in different pies, so to speak? The, the Adidas that came about because I love sportswear, I love the sort of technical side and I love that I can't do that in my ready to wear. I don't have access to those materials, to that kind of extraordinary athletic technology. That just feels right. You know, I'm also a woman that exercises and I really, at the time, it was over like 11 years ago or something, women's athletic wear was absolutely rubbish. You know, rubbish with a capital R and men's was great. And I was slightly offended. You know, doing lingerie, I wear lingerie. I really feel strongly about lingerie for women being, you know, technically amazing, the fit being amazing. Yeah, I think the unique thing about your designs is that you design for women in real situations. You don't just design for, say, women who are size zero and come from Eastern Europe. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing for me is to serve women. That's what I do. That's my job. And I'm not ashamed to say it, I'm very proud to say it. So at the end of the day, I want all women of all shapes, all sizes, all ages, all nationalities, I want them to feel good about themselves. That was great, thank you so much. Cool, down. thanks guys. Do you think leaving clue... <laughs> Sorry. Do you think having been clueless is... Yeah. Do you like the movie Clueless? <laughs> I love it. <laughs>
Are you clueless? Are you clueless? We got two hours.